Effects of radiation on living cells. Um, in an earlier uh, little discussion, I talked about the different kinds of atomic radiation, alpha, beta, gamma. We saw that alpha was the least penetrating because you could shield yourself behind a piece of paper. Um, beta was slightly more penetrating, you needed a plank of wood and the gamma was the most penetrating of all because it was very short wave and you need a big block of concrete or a big slab of steel. Now, um, one of the hazards of nuclear power is that radiation does have an effect on living tissues. Um, in, in terms of health effects on people, we can class these into two types. Um, there's the what we call somatic effects and these are effects brought about by radiation on the person who is irradiated and it's just limited to him and that's it. The other thought, sort is the so-called hereditary effects where he is irradiated and the damage caused is passed on to his descendants because of damage caused to his um, reproductive organs. So we've got two types of damage, two types of effect, and we need to um, understand uh, what's going on. We need to design safety systems which will mean that people do not get irradiated. Anybody handling nuclear materials, I know from my own experience, I once did some work on uranium-238, uh, I had to design a safety protocol, which is, I was working at Leeds University in the mechanical engineering department, had to design a safety protocol to make sure that nobody who came into the lab could get their hands or their fingers on my um, uranium samples. They were very low activity, there was no real hazard, but um, you have to ensure that people don't touch, uh, get, come into contact with these things, because it's all right if you're aware that they are uranium, but if you're not, you might end up doing something stupid. Um, now, when it comes to um, radioactive materials, if we look at the um, human system, we have a res respiratory system, uh, we have a digestive system, and Yeah, we have a we have a circulatory system. Uh, the circulatory system is the, the cardiovascular system, which pumps um, blood around our bodies. These are three systems, and um, as far as these systems are concerned, one of the hazards is that we inhale or ingest radioactive material. It might only be dust or very small particles, but it's very important we don't inhale it, it's very important we don't ingest it. By inhaling I mean breathing it into our lungs and our uh, respiratory system. Ingestion I mean swallowing it and it getting into our stomach. Um, the hazards are of course that our bodies do not recognize this material and they don't get rid of any, they don't recognize it so they don't get rid of it and if we build up too much of it then it can start to cause major health effects. Um, so that's the first problem, we've got, to avoid, we've got to avoid the danger of inhaling or ingesting particles of nuclear materials, that's very important. Now in terms of what does the radiation do, well first of all we need to consider what our bodies are made of and basically they're made of cells millions of them, billions of them, the human body consists of billions of cells, small cells, tiny cells, um, there's different kinds, there's some that make bone, some that make sinew and flesh and muscle and um, so on. Um, now, we can think of the cell as a small blob of material and at its centre we have something called a nucleus. Now this is a different kind of nucleus from an atomic nucleus, it's a biological nucleus. It's called a nucleus because it's the heart of the, the cell. Not that it's radioactive or anything, it isn't. Um, and the nucleus contains genetic material, DNA. 
This is the material that is in every cell of our bodies and my DNA is absolutely unique to me. No one else on earth, none of the other seven billion people has DNA the same as mine and everybody else on the planet. Theirs is unique. Theirs is different from mine and everybody else's. Um, it consists of a couple of um, phosphate uh, strands, helical strands, with four pairs of bases attached, adenine, guanine, cytosine, tyamine. And the positioning of these um, pairs of bases, it's like computer code, it's like punch tape. It's a series of instructions which tell you, your body, if you need to make some more material, how to make the material so it's compatible with your body. Now, if you suffer an accident and lose a lot of blood, they cart you off to the hospital and give you a blood transfusion. And that keeps you going for a few days. However, as soon as that blood gets into your body, your body recognizes it as not being your blood, it's somebody else's, and your body immediately starts to destroy it. Now, it takes a few days to destroy it, so if it keeps you going for a few days until you recover, you're all right. But you don't, your body eventually eradicates every last cell of that blood transfusion because it's not yours. Um, it's not, your body recognizes what's yours and what isn't. Now this um, DNA structure can be damaged by nuclear radiation. Um, fast neutrons can sever these um, DNA strands of material and wreck the, um, the body's ability to reproduce. Um, other forms of radiation can, can modify um, the atoms that make up your uh, biochemical systems as well. So um, without going into too much detailed biology, uh, that is the problem with atomic radiation. It will, uh, it, it has the ability to, to damage your life systems, your biological systems in various ways. The ways that just affect you are called somatic. Um, an example of somatic um, damage would be the people who are living outside the two kilometer radius in Hiroshima on the 6th of August. They would probably be um, irradiated to a small extent, they might have suffered one two burns, but eventually they would make a complete recovery. Uh, their descendants wouldn't suffer any effects. The, um, the thing about dropping an atomic bomb is uh, it's pretty horrendous while it's going off obviously, but once it's detonated, uh, radiation levels are high for the first day or two and then they very quickly start to decay. Um, I remember talking to somebody uh, and I told him I'd visited the city of Hiroshima and of course he knew about the atomic bomb. Oh, Hiroshima, he said, what's it like there now? And I said, well, it's just like a normal city anywhere. You wouldn't know. Um, you wouldn't, there's, there's a peace park, a memorial, you, you'd know if you go there, but the city's just like any other big city anywhere. The traffic's going around the island, the buses are going back as far as the taxis. There's no, there's no uh, residual radiation from what happened in 1945 at all. Um, of course, the, the genetic effects, the, um, these are the things which um, are more serious. Uh, if as a result of you being irradiated, um, you produce defective descendants, then that is clearly bad news. And um, you probably have to absorb bigger doses of radiation to sustain that kind of problem than the somatic uh, type. Um, I don't know whether there's much more I need to say, but um, we, one of the things that um, we therefore need to set up if we're going to implement safety systems in nuclear, the nuclear energy industry, is uh, we need to be able to monitor uh, how much radiation is absorbed by the people who work in the industry. Um, we live in a radioactive world. Uh, if you walk near a concrete column, 
the chances are that the aggregates in that concrete, the basalt and so on, are radioactive. If you took a Geiger counter, you would get a reading. So we operate in a system with a low level of background radiation. We used to uh, a radioactive background, albeit a low level one, but we're used to that. Um, we do need to be able to measure the radiation absorbed by people. We need to be able to measure the background radiation we've got in any sort of situation. And um, we need to be able to do more than that. We need to be able to evaluate and put a quantity, put a number on it so we can say somebody's had a certain dose of radiation. We need to be able to define that. Um, I might say um, more about that uh, in a future a little talk, but uh, I think for the moment that's all I need to say. Radiation has an effect on living cells. As a result of that, we need to keep people safe, we need to build in the necessary shielding systems, and if people work in an emergency, they need to have a badge which measures their exposure to radiation in a way that we can very quickly get a, a reading. When I was working on the uranium, I had to wear a film badge. Those are out of date now, we don't use those anymore. But I had to wear one while I was working on those uh, uranium samples. And um, it's very important that we can, uh, if, pe if we know people are going to be exposed to radiation, it's very important we know uh, how to quantify it so that um, if they get to a level which gets up to their maximum for, um, usually that they say in a year you shouldn't absorb so many rams. Well, if you get up to that level, um, you can then say, right, you're up to your limit, out of the system, you can't work here anymore, you can't work on this, this uh, site anymore, you've got, to, you've got to move out for safety reasons. So that's um, really all I want to say about the effects of radiation on, on living tissues.